this thing. Guys, check that out. That is a whole bunch of bass fish. fishing it's hot out we were in florida so i want to do a little something fun with you guys there are giant brim clouds out here and um usually when that happens we can catch some fish on a spoon and i love fishing a spoon there's no bite like it dude or the bites that you miss that go dunk dunk and you miss them it's it's freaking a blast so what we're gonna do today is i'm gonna show you some of my favorite spoons now FYI, we're doing like casting spoons. Um, when I get back up to Smith Lake and that, we'll start talking about like some jigging spoons and some micro spoons for, for fishing for spots, even largemouth and that. But down here in Florida, it's all about that casting spoon. You're gonna catch bluegills if you get out the little the little jigging spoon, but we'll catch pretty big spots up there on that stuff. So we'll do a detailed video on um, jigging spoons and the smaller spoons, like little quirky stuff when we get back up to Alabama. But today we're gonna talk about spoonage. So much spoonage, so much spoonage. Look at look at how chewed up that thing is, dude. <laughs> Guys, if you like these kinds of videos where we do technique breakdowns like this and we talk lures, bass fishing, perspectives, how to catch them, how sometimes to catch them, <laughs> you know the deal, dude. Just talking fishing and just hanging out. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get to the stuff you tuned in for though. I would say bass fish, those guys right there. Sometimes it's kind of tough to tell. Uh, what I try to do is I look at two things. One, you know, am I getting dots and do they show up on both my blue screen and my red screen as well as the 2D? It's all about cross-referencing. The other thing that I'll do is I'll look at how they're set up. Those jokers are kind of lined along the bottom and bass tend, not always, don't hold me to this, but bass tend to line up along or like more towards the bottom. You know, we're in Florida right now, but like white bass would be super duper high. Catfish will be, catfish are the tricky ones because those jokers kind of look like giant bass down on the bottom. But you know, white bass, a lot of your junk fish, they'll be higher. They'll also come up as like much fuzzier marks. Fish on. Got it off the bottom. It's amazing that these big spoons catch fish freaking of all different sizes. Look at that screen. That is beautiful. What the fuck? I think I snagged a brim. Okay, so guys, this is kind of cool. This is literally what they're eating. There is a giant school of these jokers down there all around this brush pile, actually it's an airboat, and that's what they're eating. That's a big one. Wow, she freaking crushed it. Guys, when you get these spoonfish, you just want to drag them in. Because otherwise, if they start jumping, they're coming off. That's a freaking stud. Just got the right cast. I think we're actually going to boat flip this because I don't have a, a net. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> How about that, boys? How about that? That right there was stupid. Oh, that was stupid. How about that? Oh, man, oh, man. We gotta get back in there really quick. Check out that giant. Can you say monster spoonfish? Monster spoonfish, we gotta get back in there. You just gotta drag these jokers in. Peace. Oh, you're so mean. 
Just got to drag these jokers in, dude. We boat flipped that fish, and I never boat flip with fluorocarbon, especially that big. We got to get back in there. So a few tips on fishing a spoon. If you're letting it sink and it doesn't seem like it's sinking, just do that with your rod once. Basically, it'll right side it up so it sinks down a lot faster. Sometimes it gets on a flat like plane and it doesn't want to sink down. And especially with this, this mag spoon, it'll go down fast. You want to free line it down there. There's a lot of retrieves you can use with a spoon. I'm just jerking it right now. Got to love jerking it. Um, with this mag spoon, since I'm not the biggest guy, um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do a, a double pump like that. So let it sink to the bottom. Boom, boom. And oh, that, that was the pile. Got really excited there for a second. But um, not only can you jerk it, but you can reel this joker. A lot of guys will actually, um, they'll actually cast it out there. And I've heard about it on the TVA. That's the other thing too. Casting it is tough. If you can cast it with the wind, do it. It's gonna slice left and right like all the time. The bigger the spoon, the bigger the slice. So you kinda wanna ease it, almost like live bait fishing. And even when you do that, you might be a 10 out of 10 caster. It's still gonna slice. So just be patient, take your time. But a lot of guys on the TVA, instead of like the jerking motion, They'll, they'll use like a reeling motion just like that and then let it kind of like flutter down. You notice I'm opening the bail a little bit. I'm drifting backwards, so I'm picking up a little too much line to put it back on the bottom. But you can, you can do a variety of things with it. Hell, I mean, if we were shallower, I could probably even like swim it in. It is gonna twist, if I, <laughs> I almost said a naughty. It is gonna twist up your line a little bit. The, but the most important thing, and you guys, Whoa, I'm all over the place, bro. Most important thing is when you're, when you're, when you're trying to, Jesus, man. When you're trying to land these fish, you're gonna get one or two jumps out of them and that's it. So use 25, 20 pound fluorocarbon and either have your neck guy ready to go and keep them down, rod in the water, keep them down or freaking have your neck guy ready to go. If he misses, just boat flip that joker because they are not going to stay on. You catch big ones on these jokers, but you also lose big ones on these jokers. It's part of the game. We're gonna idle over what I was fishing, and I'm gonna show you, there's a bunch of brim around it, and I'm gonna show you why that spoon was the perfect tool to, um, to go after those jokers. Part of the reason is, it, we've just noticed across the board, reaction bite seems to be key for catching the bigger fish. I can throw a drop shot down there and catch like threes and four pounders, but for catching those fives and sixes like we got, bring in, you, you gotta go a little more reaction, and a little bit bigger probably too. We're rolling up on it. Basically, it shows a tree on here, but I'm pretty sure it's a boat or an airboat. But check this out. Do you see all those brim? Those are all brim. Now, that's a bass right there. That's a bass right there. There's bass. Actually, this one shows it better. See the bass right there? I kind of see the boat. So these are all brim. There's all these brim. So the brim are being like kind of like skirted away, knocked, deflected, like by that spoon. And there you can you notice too they're also high. So the bait does two things. It creates a reaction by kind of busting through all the that brim and all that bait. And then it also gets that, that bait up a little further because there's definitely fish that are suspended eating those brim. And you notice too, we're throwing like a gizzard chat pattern. It don't matter, dude. Like the, they're eating brim, but as long as it's flashy kind of reaction style, it don't matter what color it is, just so it flashes and does magic things. Now, the one thing you do want to keep in mind, maybe you want to go gold if you got some color in your water, but this is pretty green, clear water, so we're going with like that silver kind of shimmy finish. I will tell you though, you want the pattern broke up. Best colors is the gizzard shad or the shattered glass. That broke up pattern, just like we talked about with the crankbaits. That's a big one. I have another six pound boat flip here, gentlemen. Oh dear. Oh God. 
Stay down. <laughs> How about them apples? How about them apples? <laughs> Boat flipping freaking five, sixes, sevens, eights. She wasn't coming off either. I got a stick lined up there. Back behind the deal. Oh man. Wow, she just got stuck. Nice one. <laughs> Peace. Well, guys, as usual, I like to go big or not at all. So you didn't see much action with the, the second spoon that I'm going to show you. But we caught quite a few fish and, and actually one like really solid one on um, this guy right here. This is a Nichols magnum ben parker spoon i like that gizzard shad pattern because a lot of the brim in here kind of look like that but as i mentioned earlier in the video it doesn't really matter what color it is it's really it's a reaction strike it's a reaction bite and you just want that flash and that action one thing though as i mentioned earlier you see that break up like that that sort of chopped up kind of deal i think that creates a more natural kind of like flash in the water so i definitely recommend if you if you're looking at a ben parker go with the shattered glass or go with that gizzard cheddar any pattern that that's broken up and that has that that dimple you can even see it's probably like flashing out the camera but it just reflects differently it's not like you know when you use a magnifying glass to like sort of point the sun and stuff it's not like a beam it's like a a shimmer if you will wow shimmer Nice. So that leads to the other thing. So let's talk the two casting spoons that I use. Um, Nichols, Ben Parker. I'll put links to it down in the description box. I forget if this thing's like three ounces or something like that. It's gigantic. So I don't use the super big one. I don't use the medium size one. I use the, like the original that came out. I don't really see a need for like giant and then smaller. Uh, this thing does the trick when they're eating that bigger spoon or when you need to just get them to totally react. This is the deal. Now, FYI, this does not like freaking wait. How do I say this? It doesn't not catch small fish. I've caught friggin' pound and a half fish on this joker. I don't know why they eat it. They're out of their minds, but it has to do with that reaction. So don't be intimidated. Even if you're on a body of water, say up north, where your biggest fish are gonna be like four and five pounds, like even smaller fish eat that. It's just a question of like how big the bait is really. If you guys got big brim or bluegill as we call them, um, whiting, uh, big shad, you know, just think about kind of what kind of forage is in the lake. And sometimes too, it's not even about the size of forage. Sometimes it's all about just this reaction. They've never seen anything like it. The flash, the water displacement, the fall, Ball. it's something that just triggers them numero dos i've been sitting on this one for a long time this is a talon casting spoon you can find them at tackle where else i'll put a link in the description box so it comes with garbage hooks and no swivel wait for it but it's the best spoon that you can buy from a casting standpoint it's better than the strike king and it's better than i've tried like six of them and this one is the best downside to it well actually let me show you how much best it is do you see how chawed up that thing is those are all fish like teeth cartilagey things and i hope you guys can see that this thing has seen um seen a lot of big fish and i've actually lost a bunch of them too so this one actually has been with me for hell probably like three years two years now um i do change out the hooks on these jokers you can see i put a triple grip on it i think that's a number one pretty bulky size hook you also have to put swivels on these jokers they do not come with swivels so that's the downside but frankly the action that this one gives i don't know if it's a generic press or not but it sure behaves differently than some of the other ones that i've tried um it's super simple to fish and it doesn't like a lot of them will like arc funny and do weird They'll just feel funny on the end of the line. This one, you can feel it kind of like S up or something, like when you're jerking it up, and it has a perfect flutter. It's not too slow, it's not too fast, and that's really why I dig it. So right now, I got those, like the mag spoon on an eight foot rod. It's basically a punching rod, and then the other one's on a seven nine heavy. Um, JT gave me a recommendation, and actually I was out fishing with him and shot a little bit of video, and he uses a 711 Halo TI heavy and dude i picked that thing up and that blows my rods away because it's it has a softer tip to it and you can throw the big mag nickel spoon as well as that talon um like i said right now i got it basically on two punching sticks that i have 
but I'm gonna pick up one of those those 711 heavies in the in the TI series just because I like that you want it to bend but as we talked about earlier these fish will come off in like two seconds so like you need a stout enough rod to boat flip a seven pounder but you need a rod that's got enough tip to kind of let them eat it and like get that hook in there it's just this weird balance you got to find what suits you but one thing that I will recommend across the board you're gonna want to put a high speed reel on it 721 or if you want to go crazy I even have an 821 um I think it's the what do you call it the 13 fishing yeah this guy 13 fishing it's an 811 um so that one's pretty fast because really all you're doing is you're jerking that thing up letting it flutter to the bottom and then you're picking up the slack and when they bite it dude they can knock so much slack in the line that it's hard to catch up if you got a slow reel 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon I'm a fan of 20 straight across the board. I don't want like super duper heavy line, but I will be honest with you. I have casted this guy off a couple times. It was probably my fault because the line was nicked, but 25 with a big mag spoon, a little safer. I don't like to live safe. I like to live dangerously. So I run 20. Sunline, um, FC Sniper. If you're feeling cheap though, you can run Red Label, dude, because when they freaking eat that thing, it's like, but like you're not, you, you don't gotta worry about too much sensitivity. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate your support. Um, if you enjoy these videos and you enjoy these technique and tip videos, let me know if there's something that you want to see. I'm always open to trying to try out new things and um, experiment a little bit. And uh, any tips, any kind of insights that you guys can give me on spoon fishing that you know, drop them down in the comments box. I always like hearing your perspectives and I've learned a ton from it. But for now, we are checking out. Hopefully, we'll be back out of Florida in about a week or so. And uh, we'll be shooting some more videos in Bama. But till then, we're going to try to catch monsters, all right? Tight lines, guys.